have it. Let's, everyone good? Everyone has it? Yeah. Isaiah 55, starting at verse 6. Yeah. It says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I want this to resonate in our spirits for just a few minutes, and I said this on last week. Your thoughts of God are too human. Your thoughts of God are too human. Here, we're reading that Isaiah is, is letting us know. What I loved about it, he said that let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. His thoughts, his thoughts. Here's the thing about thoughts. Your thought only has a beginning. That's all it has. See, if we're talking about a God who is the Alpha and the Omega, meaning when God ends something, he can begin it at the same time. Something your human mind can't comprehend. This is why he's letting us know. Please understand, the way you do things is not the way I do things. See, we got to understand that God doesn't move by sentiment. He only moves by principle. This is the Bible. This is the instruction to know who he is so that we as a people can understand the fullness of what we can find ourselves coming out of every time because the God we serve is totally in control. Yeah. His fullness, everything about God, he's trying to get us to understand that we work too hard because we put him in our thoughts as if he operates the way we do. Yeah. And God is saying, your, your thoughts of me are too human. So if your thought process only has a beginning, it can only operate one way. Because just like faith and just like time, the only thing you're in control of right now is right now. So your thought process, regardless of what's going on in your life, you have the ability now to shift it. Because it only has a beginning. It doesn't matter what's been done. It, it doesn't matter what you can't see and what passed. The fact is you have the power right now to get your thought process lined up to the one who says, I need you to line up your life according to mine. So everything about who wants to do whatever doesn't dictate your thoughts unless you allow it to dictate your thoughts. So here God is saying, please understand, my thoughts are not the way you think. The ways that I have are not the way you have them. And this is where the enemy tricks us. The enemy tricks us because he wants to take our now thoughts and put an end to it. Think about that. He wants to take the good things that are in our hearts and in our minds, and he wants us to not think that way. So what he does is he'll stir up some mess because he knows once he gets your attention, your attention is going to create a thought process. So what he'll do is he'll create, remember, he, he, he was given the okay by God to rule certain things, but it doesn't mean he'll, he can ever rule you and I. Ever. But what he can do, because remember, he's the great illusionist. He can't open the door. He can't shut the door. He can't do none of that. He can't take your life. He can't do any of that. But what he can do is to create an environment to make you do it yourself. So he may not be able to open the door and shut the door, but if he can create a sound, what's that? What's that? Instead of waiting to see or hear again, we immediately respond because our thought process is very powerful. So God is saying you've got to start changing the way you think. This is why the enemy understands that most lives are ended short because he makes people think that what you're thinking about because of what you're going through will literally destroy you. So the best way to get out of it is end the way you think. 
How do you end someone's thinking process? You have to eliminate the person. Because as long as the person is still alive, it thinks. It has a process. And this is why suicide is such at a high rate because people go through, three, go through things and mentally they can't handle it because they stay in the space or in the place. And this is why it's difficult. When people are going through and they find themselves by themselves, that's the worst place to be. Because when people don't have the ability to help you come out, your thought process is already putting an end to something it can't put an end to. Do, do, do we understand? And, that, and, and as God starts to teach us, he, he tries to get us to understand that bad thoughts can stop if you stop thinking about them. It's, it, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, and here's the thing. There's nothing new under the sun. And this Bible is not that deep. And I, I was sitting there talking to a great man of God, and he sat there and was sharing how people will, will, will create their own way of thinking because of this word. And God is saying, and I shared this with you guys before, if God gives you the ability to walk on water, does it matter if the water is 2 feet deep or 2,000 feet deep? If you're walking on top, what you're concerned about what's going on underneath. If I have the ability to walk on water, it don't matter how deep the water is, I'm on top of it every time. The Word of God operates the same way. We have to learn how to be on top of the Word of God where we don't give the enemy any room to affect our thought process. And this is why he was very clear very clear in Philippians 2 and 5 when he says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, I've given you the power to think about powerful, positive things without nothing else affecting who you are because everything about who you are is based on what you think about you. And if you know that you're a child of God, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, who cares what someone else who doesn't have the ability to change your thought process unless you allow them into your most intimate space and allow them that type of power? The enemy doesn't have it. All he can do is make you give it to him. So he's trying to get us to understand to change that. Somebody go to Philippians 4 and 8. This blessed me so much. As much as I've been reading this scripture, when someone has it, just let me know who you are. We've got to get our thought process to start shifting. Because we, you have it? Read Philippians 4 and 8 for me, please. I didn't amplify. Okay. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true. Stop right there. For the rest. Somebody give me another version of it. And I want you to continue to read. Same stop. What's it say? Same thing for the rest. Somebody got another version? Read yours. Stop. Anything that's finally, is there anything else you can add to it? Anything. Is there anything you can put in the place of, when it says finally, when it says the, at the end, this is it. Continue to read. I'm sorry, Julie. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seen, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Stop Fix right your there. eyes on them. <sighs> Do we get that? God is trying to get us to understand you need to look a little closer than what you're looking. Because if you really pay attention to God and his infinite wisdom, understand something. God is sovereign and God was, 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 was praying. I was like, God, thank you. Because God, who is the author and finisher of our faith, knows all things. And let me tell you something when you know who your God is. It doesn't matter what happens. You have to understand he allowed it because he is sovereign. And because he's the only one who has the ability to have the beginning and the end all wrapped up in one, you can't think like a human and say, well, if it's going on this way, it has to end up this way. God says, no, it can go on this way and I can shift this so. Understand something, until the word of God overtakes you and overwhelms you, don't tell me you know the word of God. 
Don't tell me how much you know the word of God because the fact of the matter is this stuff consumes your very thought process. It literally, this is why he came in human form to let you know you can get a hold of this thing and you can walk on serpents. You can speak those things that be not as though they were. We've got to get to the point to understand if we're called children of the most high God, we got to think. Yeah. We got to think like the most high God thinks. Our thought process is everything. And this is why we have to be ever so careful to give people a license to be by themselves, a license to be in their pain, a license. No, no, no. We're all going to feel this thing. I love the word of God. Believing fully, believing fully in the word of God renders Satan less responsible to the most horrific acts that are going on right now. Can I say that again? When you fully understand that the God we serve is omni, omni meaning all, he's omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere, he's omniscient, means he's all-knowing, and he's omnipotent, means he's all-powerful. When all is in place, can you put anything else in here? So if we understand that the God we serve is all, then nothing else can fit in his presence unless he lets it come in. So it doesn't matter if he's omniscient, if he's omnipotent, if he's omnipresent, that means he's in full control of everything that's taking place, even when you think you're in control to help his decision making. You can't do it. You can't do it. So if this mind in me is the mind of Christ, what can you do unless I allow you into a space that only I know about? And this is where most of us are getting it wrong because we get people to come into our ears and speak some things and before you know it, it's changing the thought process so you can't get what Julie just read, thinking of the things that are right and pure and a good report. He laid it out for you that these things are in front of you. Why aren't you thinking about it? Why aren't you thinking about it? Why are you so concerned about your children who I love more than you love? Why are you concerned about the events that's going on in the world when I'm in full control, when you understand that I'm on me, you'll let that thing be what it is because I already have an ending to the beginning that's trying to take you out. I understand these things. I, I operate this way. And this is why God is so infinite in his wisdom. So the, the question is going to be asked, if all these horrific acts are taking place on the planet, what in the world, how in the world do we profit of all these things, all these bad things that are happening in our lives as individuals, all the things that's going on in the world? Somebody go to John 16, 33. This is going to answer that question. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Stop. Everybody get that? Say that one more time. Say that thing like you mean it. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Stop. He's going to give you the things, but he's telling you these things is so that you can have peace. Now tell me what the things are. Read, Michael. I'm sorry. In the world, you will have tribulation. Ooh, time out. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to tell you this stuff so that you can have peace. Uh, what is it? Tell, what, say that again. What is it? In the world, you will have tribulation. He said, I'm going to set you up to let you know mm -hmm. that if you understand this, you're going to have peace. In this life, mm -hmm. you're going to go through some stuff. Yeah. Keep going. But... Be of good cheer. Uh-huh. I have overcome the world. <laughs> you understand the thought process now? Yeah. It's like, I'm telling you, let me before it happens, let me tell you now why it gotta happen. I want you to have some peace. <laughs> clear indication, clear instructions. The fact is, you know your mind. I won't put you on the spot. I know my brother. My brother Mom. Antonio is here with us. I know growing up, you know, he got the nickname Moni because like you, Bear, he know how to find all the money. <laughs> so we call him Moni for short. That's been going on since like 1974, I think. And for one of the things I recognize about my brother is that relationship will say, when he destroys something that he loves, 
Instead of me questioning him, saying, why did you destroy that? I look at what he destroyed and say, there's a reason he got rid of that. In other words, we see all these horrific things happening, and we go straight into, why? If you know who God is, you will realize that he did that because there's an ultimate plan of getting rid of that. And this is why we got to be careful because we go to God in prayer and we say, God, do this for me. God, I'm sick of this. God, I'm doing this. And then we want to question how he gets rid of the very thing you prayed about. Wow. He said, you better open up your eyes and get your thought process right because you and I were in agreement just last year about what we were going to do. You told me I'm leaving in your hand. You left it in my hands. Now you're running to me trying to rip it out of my hands so that you can be in control. No. Oh, no, 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 no. That's that's not how he operates. So he lets us understand. If you understand who I am, you immediately stay in the place of peace. And the only thing that can interrupt your peace is you. This is why when you go see a psychiatrist, when you go see people with help, it doesn't matter what they say to you. At the end, they understand the power of them saying can't change. So what they do is they have to drug you. They have to get you into a space where you no longer exist so that they can be in control. So when people say, well, Pastor, I ain't never heard in the Bible that smoking weed is wrong. I never heard in the Bible that drinking was wrong. I never heard. And I say, you're absolutely right. But let me tell you what you do every time you touch a substance that alters your appearance and alters your life. What you're saying is, God, what you've done is not enough, so I'm going to switch it over to what I want it to become. This is why when people can't get on the dance floor because they have a drink, you have no clue who you are. When people can't function because they got to get smoked out, you have no clue who you are. And so what you're saying to God is the greatest disrespect because what you're telling him, I like what you did, but I don't fully like it. So I'll alter what you've done because my thought process is not like yours. God is saying, you got to get this thing together. You got to shift this thing. Just because he knows you and he's designed you, don't think. <laughs> Just because he knows you far, he made you fearfully and wonderfully. Just because he did that, that doesn't mean he thinks like we think. And I think that's a problem sometimes because we want to associate ourselves with people and you ever had a group of people around you, Malcolm, and what happens is because you guys ran together for about 20 years, you look there and you say, man, he thinks just like I think. Then year 21 comes along, and all of a sudden you do something, and they literally try to cut your throat in doing it. Why? Because what you thought you knew, you didn't know at all. As a matter of fact, the reason why you didn't know them is because you really didn't know who you were. So all they did was infiltrate the space that you allowed them in. And God is like, it's time to grow up and understand that your thinking is going to control everything. The, the fact of the matter is the only one that's an emotional wreck is us. We're the only ones that's an emotional wreck. Because according to what he said in Numbers 23, 19, he's not like man that he should lie. Go to some man where he has to repent. He's not like man. And we can't start thinking as if God, well, he understands. No, he don't. He's not going by your sentiment. He's going by the principle. He understands that he rolled it all out and you ain't you ain't not hearing to it. That he understands. But you can't say because you're feeling this way and God, God put the no. God gave you a thought process to make your mind be stayed on him. And this is why you have to be careful when people are miserable to find yourself around misery because that's the time where the enemy will just roll some stuff in there. Girl, I understand. Bro, I understand. Before you know it, they can infiltrate your thought process to make you do exactly what they won't do because they don't have the power or they don't have the strength to do things that are courageous. This is why gangs are formed. This is why all these things are formed. Why? Because I'm trying to get you to do the dirt I don't want to do. It's a thought process. Not to say they didn't go through some things, but after a while, you know when wrong is wrong. So the only way to get rid of it is to get somebody who doesn't have quite a strong thought process. You take your thoughts, stick it in that body, and watch that body do what you don't need to do anymore. Isn't that the system of the world? 
He says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Don't think like these people think. Don't respond like these people respond. They have no clue of who I am. Step out. Come out. I say you are in the world, but you're not of the world. We talk about that. Anything you in, you can get out. Anything you of means you belong to it. My thought process ain't like this. I don't, I don't want to think that way. 1 Corinthians 2.16, he says, who are we to think we can understand the mind of Christ? Who, 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 who are we? Can we, can we? can we actually fashion and form some things? And I, and I think we're losing the fact that God is our mission. Who cares what the government did? Who cares that homosexuality is illegal? Who cares that all, oh, I mean legal now, who cares about all that? Yeah, if yeah. he's allowing it to happen, don't you yeah. think he got the ultimate plan? Yeah. Don't you think he's the one that desires it? So when people come, well, it's love, it's love. Fine, my question is, if you're so feeling so good about it, why do you have so many concerns about it? If I'm really, really content about who I am, why do I consistently try to get your advice about helping me really feel this thing. There it is. That's the word. Why do I seek others' approval about something I'm supposed to be confident in? What? What? So what happens is the system of the world, now the Christians are mad. Why are you mad? This stuff has been going on from the beginning of time. But now that it's in your face, you want to get mad, but why should it change your thought process? What? Be who you want. Love who you want. At the end of the day, I'm not living by sentiment. I'm living by a principle. And if this tells me it's wrong, that's all I need to know. You can knock yourself out. You can hang out. You can go on the fire escape. You can scream it out to the world. But you won't be able to change my thought process because my mind is like Christ. And this is the consistency I'm going to have. The problem is, here's the problem. We see what we call the heathen. We look at the world and see them carve out their God, see them put money and call that their God, see them create all these new things, but we forget there are millions of Christians who are heathen creating a mind of God. There's a thought process that they have about their God. You are just as much as a heathen, I am just as much as a heathen when I put God in my thought process. I just carved out the God I wanted. He says, I have no other God before me, so don't get it wrong. Just because they're in front of that statue and they're sitting there and they're praying, the fact that you think I think like you think, you just carved out your own little image. You just carved out your own little thing. He says, I have no other God before me. It's time for you to shift. Get in my word and understand how I operate so that you operate fully in who I am. And this is where we need to grab a hold of this thing. If he's not the God who's supreme, then he's not the God at all. If he's not supreme God, then he's nothing. Don't say that God is good here, but you work with him over here. No. If he's the God of this, then he's the God of that. He's the God of that. So when people say, yeah, I'm good here, but I struggle here. Well, that's where God don't exist. At least the real one. Now, the one you've created, yeah. But the one you've created is going to disappoint you every time because you disappoint yourself every time. So how does he fit in that place? And we're about to end it. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 29. And this is where we're going to end it. We need, if we need to post this thing on our refrigerator, post it. You need to post it on your bathroom, post this. And we're going to start at verse 10. This is David's prayer. This is David's prayer. We, we, we need to get this thing. 1 Chronicles 29. Let's start at verse 10. Do we all have it? And David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head of all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. 
And this is what I love. When he said in the verse 13, when did he say to praise God? Verse 13. Ah, when, he, when did he say to glorify him? Because he understands that your thought process can only start because you only have a beginning to it. So if you want stuff to change, has Julie Red think on these things? I know it looks horrible, but you ain't thinking like God thinks. Because I promise you, if you dig deeper, you'll see some stuff in there where you'll see God's handiwork. That if he smashed it, you said, say, ooh, God must be ready to piece something together that I don't understand. Because God just doesn't destroy without the ability of building. Without And everything God does is love. So in that, I may not understand it, but there's some love that's up in there right now. There's some things that are happening. And one of the things my brother and I were talking about just recently, when we lost our oldest brother, when we lost him, the fact of the matter is we had to get together as a fan. I had to go to him. He came to me. And one of the things that kept standing out to me was that God promised me. Alex, I can't tell you what he promised my brother Moni because that's between him and God. But one thing I know God promised me. He said, I'm going to save you and I'm going to save your entire house. Now, it wasn't my business to go back to God and say, God, since you're going to save my entire house, let me tell you how to save him. I don't know how. So the fact that he had to go through what the world may say, oh, that's a horrible death. No, the promise of God said he was going to save him. He never told me how. Then I read scripture. He says this flesh means nothing to God. In order to save that spirit, as a matter of fact, I got to destroy the flesh. This is why we can't get caught up. And when the Bible talks about that, the enemy cannot take out a life without consulting God. We have to be mindful that God in his infinite wisdom, do people make choices? Yes. Do people put themselves in compromising positions? Yes. But what did God say to you about that? I can't go by what he's telling Julie or what, he, what he's telling Ma, what he's telling. I can't go by that. All I can go by is what he told me because that's what's locked in my thought process. This mind is in him. It has to be. Because if not, I won't be able to function. So here, he says, let's glorify now, God. I need, to, I need to let you know how much I appreciate you now. Even in the giving process, you can only give what's in your thought process now. When you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, you can only do it one way. Now. Don't tell me about how you're going to do it next week. I'm going to go to church. No, you don't have that. All you have is right now. So he's saying, I need your thought process to start to shift so that you can see yourself in a greater light. That's why signs and wonders will follow us who believe, because signs and wonders supersedes our thought process. When something is a miracle, can you honestly say you mapped it out in your head and, and figured it out? No, then it's not a miracle. <laughs> so God is saying, change the way you think. And we're about to end this thing. Second Chronicles 2, 26, you don't have to go with it. Go there. No one can withstand you, God. Proverbs 21, 30. No counsel can go against you, God. Psalms 135 says, God does whatever he wants, whenever he wants, because he knows all things. Now, in the book of Exodus chapter 34, you don't have to go there. This is Moses going back up to the mountain to get those two tablets together again so he can get those commandments laid out. Remember the first time, God told him, you broke it. So he goes back up there. And if you, I want you to read all the Exodus chapter 34. When you go there, God is specific in what he wants to see done and how he wants to see it done. Now, here's the thing. The Bible says that he tells the Israelites, I'm going to hold back the Hittites, the Canaanites, the Jebusites. I'm going to hold them all back. Just because God held them back didn't mean they weren't still enemies. So, you have the people here. All the enemies are around. And then God says, three times a year, I need you to leave there, go up and sacrifice. I'm going to tell you what to sacrifice, but you got to come out of here and go. Now, the human thought process would have been like, once we leave, the enemies are coming in. Because the enemies see you going up the hill. The enemies see that you have left your stuff open. But God told them before they made a move, I'm telling you, I'm going to hold them all back. How often do we go to God and pray? And we say, God, we need you to do this. And God, can you do this? And then God says, okay, but I don't need your help. 
The only thing I need is for you to do the things I'm going to tell you to do that's going to take you out of the place that either you're going to protect or I'm going to protect. Who's going to protect it? Whose protection you want? Whose protection you want? Because at the end of the day, because bam, that's our money. That's our house. That's all that. I'm going to go, but I'm going to send somebody else, Lord, because I'm going to help you out in protecting what's mine. And God is like, no, no, no. He did that purposely. He did it purposely so that the people of Israel will understand that as long as you stay true to God and your thought process never changes, the enemy can never infiltrate what God doesn't allow him to infiltrate. It's a powerful, powerful message because even as Christians, we have let our guard down. Now things are on the inside and we don't want to be mad at the person who brought it in. They're just doing what they do. But if your mindset is, this isn't changing, I'm staying consistent with God. I don't care if it's in here. Because the fact of the matter is, God will handle that. God will take care of that. God will bring justice. God will bring the things that he needs to do. As long as I do the one thing I need to do, I need to praise him now. I need to glorify him now. I need to give him my thought process right now. I need to stay consistent in who I am right now. And if I do that, he says, there is no good thing that I withhold from that person that walks up right before me. Who is the person that walks up right before God? Who is the person that gets God's attention? The one whose thought process is stayed on him. That's who gets it. Because everything about your life now becomes a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. You want to know how you're made holy? You're made holy because of your thought process. My mind is in God. He's a holy God. I think like a holy God. He's got to keep me holy. Oh, we're only human. Problem number one. Because we're not. He created us in spirit. Yeah, he put a human body on us, but we can't use the fact that he did what he did as an excuse. That's why he said, y'all got too many excuses. Jesus, come on down. You're the next contestant. Let them know exactly how this thing happens. Let them know exactly how they can walk in holiness. Let them know exactly how when people spin on you, take your life, criticize you, all these things. Say Hosanna one day, crucify them. Teach them how they can get through that thing and still be in glory with me still be in communion with me. And this is why we have to get our thought process so in tune with God because he says the problem has been because you feel a certain way, you turn me into something I cannot become. I cannot become your human thought process. I know I love you. I want the best for you. But if you're shifting me into that space, then I'm no longer who I am. And if I don't become who I am, there's a greater concern you should have. They're just trying to get out of this. How about once I stop being, then you stop becoming? You won't be able to breathe. You won't be able to function. You think this is something? No. Shift. Stay in me. Let me do the things I told you I was going to do, and it will absolutely shift everything. This is why we have to stay consistent. I'm going to end it with John 1.12. If you want to know who they are, the Bible says in John 1, 12 that to them, he gave them power to be called children of the Most High. Who are them? Those who mind is stayed on God. Those who make a decision every day to wake up and say, this day I shall serve you, Lord. This day it's going to be you and I. This day nothing will, 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 will get me out of that place, God. Me and you. You and I, God, these are your children. This is your, I know she's my wife, but she belongs to you. You control, you be in charge. But today, my mind is fixed and stay on you. I want to be a part of them. And if you go into the book of Revelation and John at the island of Patmos, he's saying, wow, look at all those people. The Bible says, these are they who sacrificed for the sake of the land. These are people in white robes. These were they who didn't concern themselves about what the world is doing. These are they who didn't concern themselves about people trying. You can't get over on God. Man, they can't touch you, man. As long as you stay connected, connected and, and, and with a level of conviction in your spirit to know that it's him who I live for. God, that's your building. This is your block. This is your house. Everything belongs to you, God. I am going to keep my mind fixed and stay it on you. So let's get past the way we comprehend things in the human form and let's get in that spirit realm 
where that spirit man wants to be the one to control our very steps. Let me tell you something about that spirit man. You'll fall in love with you when you're really introduced to that person because that's the fullness of who you are. When he spoke and said, let there be light, he was already creating each and every one of us first in the spirit realm. If you know that person, I promise you, it's a different it's a different type of love you'll have for yourself because that's the person that reflects the God who created you. Any questions, comments, concerns? Wow. Mm -hmm. Why do I need that? I went to church twice today. <laughs> That's why I was confident to say, before you leave, God's going to speak. Why aren't we that bold anymore? Why aren't we bold enough to lay hands on the sick and really know they're going to recover? Why aren't we bold enough to speak those things that be not good? You know why? Because we don't go on the thought process of God. We go on our thought process. Well, just in case it don't happen, I don't want to be called a bad Christian. Well, you're a bad Christian anyway for not doing it. <laughs> God is trying to shift our minds. So thank you for that, Baron. It's so great to see you, brother. It really is. Anyone else? Comments, questions, concerns? No, I was just kind of feeling that when you were talking about how when people want to commit suicide and their thought process and how they get caught up in their thoughts. And I had a client recently that was trying to kill herself. She wasn't successful, but it was just that. Mm -hmm. And she was alone. Wow. And when she tried to reach out, she didn't reach out to the right person. They were like, do it. And so it was like all this was created in a certain atmosphere. Mm. And she couldn't get out of where she was because she couldn't see herself anywhere else. Wow. And it, it just, and I'll see her again on Monday. So all of this <laughs> is like I'm just praying on how to yeah. relate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dion. 